Hey, all right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 196 of the Spear Sunday's podcast. And look, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get dumb. I'm gonna sneeze. No, I'm not. Right, I need to get down to business. Okay, I hate my fucking cat. It sucks. It's a bad pet. It's never been nice to me. Right? The only thing that it fucking does is meow when it's hungry, and then whenever I do anything else, it just bites me or hisses at me. It's a shit pet. It's a bad fucking pet. The per- we saved its life. All I have to do to kill this thing is nothing. I just gotta, oh, I just will stop opening cans for like two weeks, and that problem is fucking solved. But I don't do that because I'm a good person and that fucking shit pet doesn't appreciate anything that I do for it because it's it's a fucking cat. And I knew this would happen. Minute Jazz is like, oh, we should get a cat. I'm like, no, I don't want a cat because cats suck. I want a dog because dogs are like, hey, hey, man, that's that's what a dog is. A dog goes, bro, what's going on? Hey, my man, that's what a dog does. A cat just looks at you and is like, oh, this cunt again. Bad pets. They shouldn't be pets, all right? They don't want to be pets. They want to be outside eating baby birds and fucking killing their mothers, but not, not properly killing them, just like, you know, cutting them open and then playing with them and then running off because they're fucking sociopaths. Cats don't want to be pets, all right? There are a lot of animals on this planet that aren't pets because we know they don't want to be pets. Lion, that's not a pet. Some people have them, but they don't want to be pets. I saw Tiger King, right? The only cunts who keep lions as pets apparently are like meth head rapists with harems. Do you reckon that's like a big, a big fucking criteria? That, like, is that a big box you have to check to own a tiger? Like, how many chicks have you fucked at the same time? If it's, if it's anything less than two, you can't have a lion. You know? Why is it on that fucking show that every cunt who owned a tiger was fucking multiple people? Even Joe Exotic was, you know, he had two dicks in his mouth every night, for sure. And that's, apparently, if you like tigers, you also, like, that's the thing. You know what it is? None of these guys had one cat, you know? They all had multiple big cats. When they see a cat, they want two. Makes sense. None of these guys could handle one pussy. They need multiple. So I'm on board with that, actually. That does make sense. If you look at, if you look at a pussy and you go, this is fucking not enough for me to handle. I need more then I guess you you should own a, a lion. You know, for me, one pussy, more than enough. I would be fine with no pussy. I'd rather be a fucking incel <laughs> than have this fucking cat. It's a bad pet. Can we all agree? Right? People who have cats. I'm ta- I know you're out there, you fucking spared Sunday's cat people. Look, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is if you're a cat person, all right, I don't think you're, I don't think you actually prefer cats to dogs. I think you actually hate yourself a little bit. I think you have low standards for what you think you deserve. And I think you deserve an animal that wants to be around you, that likes you and wants to be your pet, rather than something that all they fucking do is sit there and look out the window, dreaming of committing war crimes on small animals. Like, fuck, I wish I could leave so I could kill shit. Oh, who's this guy touching me, trying to be nice? Fuck you. Hiss. They're they're bad pets, and they don't want to be good pets. A dog, you know, have you ever seen a stray... This is the perfect example. Stray dog versus stray cat. All these cunts are like, oh, no, you just have a bad cat. My cat loves me. No, he doesn't, okay? You feed him, and you rub him. It's different. It's fucking different. This is the main difference. You know that dogs want to be pets and cats don't. I don't give a fuck how nice your cat is. He doesn't want to be there. Let's be real. If your cat is such a good pet and loves you so much, leave the door open. Huh? 
Open that shit up. Doesn't want to be a pet, man. That's like a fucking bird in a cage. Let me out. You know? See, a dog doesn't run away. That's the difference, right? A cat will run away. A cat will get out of the house and be like, finally, and they'll fucking run away. Cats run away. Dogs don't run away. Cats run away. Dogs get lost. (laughs) <laughs> that's the main difference. A cat gets out and they're like, fuck yeah, I can be a cat now. I can do what I want to do. Run around, you know, get into fights with other cunts, kill shit, have sex, terrify people at night with my terrible noises. A dog gets out the door and is like, oh, fuck, this is bad. I don't like this at all. And then gets hit by a car. That's the main difference, bro. Cats are bad pets no matter how, no matter what way you look at it. A cat is an inferior pet to a dog. I've had both. I've, I've, I've done it. You know, I've seen a nice cat. I don't have one, but I've seen them and I'm going, oh yeah, that looks like, you know, a dog on 30%, you know. The most you can get a cat to love you is a dog on day three of an adoption where he's like kind of warming up to you, but he's not really sure about you. He's like, he's decided that you're not going to kill him. That's pretty, almost 100% sure that it's not, that that this human is not going to kill me. I don't like him yet, but he does rub my head. So I'm going to let them do that. But the whole time they do it, I'm going to be looking at him like, don't you fucking kill me. This is all right for now. But if you make one move I haven't seen you do, I'm going to run away. Right? That's what a dog does day three of being adopted by a new family. Whereas that's a cat all the time. That is the pink cat. A cat can only love you as much as a dog day three of being adopted. Not very much. That the main is what I'm saying, right? Cats don't want to be pets. Dogs do. Okay? Cats aren't there yet. We've had dogs longer than we've had cats. And that's what it is. Cats don't know that they're pets and they don't really want to be. They want to be wild animals. And they aren't sure why this fucking clumsy, loud fucker is following them around, ruining their cover. You ever see a cat do that where they're just chilling out, hiding in some small space and you come walking along like you, with your big fucking human limbs just thumping? Hi, hello! And they look at you like you fucking ruined it. This was the perfect hiding space and you came along and fucking ruined it again and then they leave the room no one's looking for you bro you're not important here's what i'm saying guys cats don't want to be your pet dogs do and here's how i know that have you ever gone traveling right to one of those fucking countries like bali or thailand where they have stray dogs everywhere and stray cats. What are the dogs doing? Hanging out with the humans, coming up to them and going, hey, bro, what's fucking good? You getting on it tonight? Huh? You fucking having a bit of a party? You get, you get, you getting loose tonight or what? Hey, ooh, ooh, ooh. you fucking going off. Yeah, you are. Ooh, 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 ooh. That's what the dogs are doing. They're hanging out with the humans. Like, fuck, this is just one big party, isn't it? Oh, oh, oh. Give me a belly rub. I've got, I might have, I've got fleas. I'm very dirty, but, you know, let's fucking get it in. Where are the cats? Hiding from you because they don't want to be your fucking friend. Gotcha. All these cunts, all these with cats. Oh, my cat actually might. If your cat wasn't born in a fucking house, he would hate every one of you cunts. And that's the truth. Sorry. Gotcha. Checkmate, cat cunts. I'm sorry. I'm just frustrated because my cat doesn't like me. Likes my girlfriend, doesn't like me. i got to pause here. Yeah, that's that's what I'm angry about. My cat likes my girlfriend, doesn't like me. Fucking... And it's frustrating, right? Because the cat fucking lived with Jazz for like years 
And now we live together and the cat's like, when is this guy going to leave? Previously, he would hang out for two days, max, rub me. I would try to bite him and then he would go home for five days. When is this cunt leaving? That's what, that's the attitude that I'm getting from this fucking cat is she, her looking at me and then looking at my girlfriend and going, uh, is he going home yet? Because this sucks. Shit cat. I don't know what it wants. I'm a dog person. I come from a house. I, bro, I had fucking every animal. Fish. I had birds. I had fucking rabbits. I had guinea pigs. Dogs. Never had a cat. And now, I know why, right? You know what's, you know what's the worst thing about this fucking shit cat? We adopted her. From a Chinese tourist. This fucking bitch could have been lunch if we didn't step in. Does she fucking appreciate it? No. Not at all. Hey. You would have been fucking katsu don. That's Japanese and also not cat. Huh? (laughs) How's that? Bit of fucking comedic generalization there. No, she wasn't going to fucking eat it. She was going to China. But he's like... I didn't know this. See, Jazz adopted this cat. Complete surprise. I was on tour. She did it so well. Fucking nailed it. There was nothing I could do. She was talking about getting an animal. And I was like, look, if you're going to get an animal, at one, at some point, we're going to move out together. So I feel like we should decide on an animal together. And her brain here is, don't get the pet that you want. And that's all she heard. <laughs> She heard, if you give me input, it won't be 100% your decision. And then she went, well, fuck, I can't have that. And you know what? All power to her, you know, because I've done that shit before, you know. I'm like, fuck, if she was here, I would have to do something for the two of us. But she's not. So I'm getting that, you know. You know that one? Like fucking, when it, like my girlfriend hates peanuts, dude. If I'm with her and I see, and we go get burgers or something, and I see that fucking peanut thick shake, bro, fuck her, I'm getting it. No, I've done that. I've done that. She cried. I can't do it anymore. I can't believe you ruined our date. Can't do it anymore, right? And you know what? <laughs> Fair enough. Very inconsiderate of me. But when I'm alone, Fuck that bitch. You know what I mean? You, know what I mean? You, get, you ever get that feeling? No matter who you, how much you love the person, sometimes you get by yourself and, you, and you're like, you know what? They would fucking hate this, huh? <laughs> they would hate this shit. You ever do that? I do that all the time. Out by myself. I'm getting that fucking peanut thick shake. She's going to, she would have hated that. <laughs> and that's what she did to me. She's like, oh, bro, he's not here. I'm going to get the fucking cat. He's going to hate this. But there's nothing he can do. And you know what? Well played. Because now I have a fucking cat and I've been yelling about it for 15 minutes on a podcast. And now it's your problem. See how the world works? Nothing's ever my problem. It's yours. (laughs) Oh, that's what she did. But here's how I know... That I think I think we got fucking scammed, if I'm being honest. I think we got I didn't know this at the time, right? When Jazz adopted this cat, right? She did it pretty much in secret. I'm out, I'm on tour, you know, I'm working hard, I'm making you cunts laugh. Rest in peace, live touring. I'm I'm at it. I'm on the road. I'm working. You know, I'm a fucking road dog. You know? I'm doing everything right. I'm I'm being faithful. I'm staying in contact. I'm being the best boyfriend I can. Going on, going on the road, bringing back the bread. You know, I'm working. Then one day, just get a text of my girlfriend holding a cat. And I saw the photo and I just went, fucking got me. Because they're over. What am I going to do? Fly home? Throw the cat out the window? She got me. Defeated. It's over. I'm like, Fuck. I'm a cat owner. Shit. 
Do you reckon that's what Angelina Jolie did with, with children, African kids? Like Brad Pitt was just out one day shooting a fucking movie on the road, being a road dog, being a good husband, being faithful. And then all of a sudden, you know, Angelina Jolie sends a selfie with some fucking kid and he looks at the photo and he's like, that's a new shade, isn't it? <laughs> oh, fuck. Is that the bitch that, that adopted all the, all the fucking kids? Was that her, Angelina Jolie, with all the, all the new kids? Or, or am, I, am I getting these A-listers mixed up? Angelina Jolie adopted kids. What a good bit. Fuck, that's a new shade. Dear God, I miss Stander. I might have saved that. Oh, yeah. She has a bunch. Oh, two. Two were adopted from orphanages. Oh, no, three. Maddox, Zahara, and Pax. Fuck me. Adopted from orphanages in Cambodia, Ethiopia, and Vietnam, respectively. Jesus Christ. Dude, didn't those cunts hit the fucking lottery? Man, you know what's really rough, though? Like, it's amazing that these really well-to-do, well-off family has adopted kids. That's really good. And that's an amazing thing that they've done. But fuck me, they stand out. And not because they're different races, just because of how fucking good-looking the biological children are. Like, this, dude, I'm looking at this photo. This kid, this like 10-year-old kid has a jawline that looks like a, he looks like he's got a fucking Minecraft character's head and he has Angelina Jolie's lips. If I keep talking about this kid, I'm going to be put on a fucking list, right? And I'm not saying that these adopted children are ugly. In fact, you know what? I reckon they, they shopped around a little bit. You'd have to, wouldn't you? Like, if you're fucking Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie and you're fucking, you know your kids are going to come out one way or the other. Whenever really, really hot couples have kids, only two things can happen, right? Either they're hot as fuck or they are ugly as. Normally, they're ugly, right? Have you ever noticed that? Two hot people didn't hardly ever make hot kids. They make some ugly motherfuckers. Ugly people make the hottest kids. Everybody knows that. You get two uglies, bro, next generation's going to be on the cover of Vogue. That's just science, ladies and gentlemen. I reckon, looking at these adopted kids, I, I really do think they shopped around because these are some handsome kids, the adopted ones, you know? I haven't seen many Vietnamese boys with a jawline like that. I've seen a couple of Vietnamese lady boys with a jawline like that, but that's some different, that's different. That's a different energy, you know? I reckon they shopped around and they were like, look, you know, we, we want to adopt some third world kids, but we don't want to adopt any third world heads. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? You see those third world heads? You don't want none of that. None of that in the fucking Brangelina family. Thank you very much. Nines and tens only. Sorry, did you mean at nine years old? No, I want a nine out of ten three-year-old. How do you shop for that, huh? Look, shopping. That's, that's sus, isn't it? Imagine if fucking Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie were going around the orphanage just looking for the hottest kids possible. That, that'll put them on a fucking list. That'll get them an invite to Epstein's next party, wouldn't it? Fuck me. For real though, I reckon they shopped around. Because I mean, look, when you're, when you're adopting a, like a really young child, their personality is like, you don't know what it is. You know, if they're fucking two years old, you just want to, like if you're adopting a two year old, you can tell, you ever see a fucking toddler and you just know exactly what they're going to look like in 20 years? You ever, you ever fucking, you, you, you ever meet a couple with a young child and you look at their baby and you just think, oh no, they're going to be really ugly. What a shame. What a fucking shame that is. That kid is going to grow up to be really ugly and they don't even know. 
You know, like like you you see a you see a kid and they're going to grow up to be real ugly, and you just want to look at that kid and you just want to go stay this way forever, because as long as they're that age, they'll have no idea. You know, the world's world's not a nice place. No one has any idea if they're good looking or not. And then one day, one day, everyone just finds out. You know, I remember when I found out that I wasn't the best looking person on the planet. I've, I don't think you properly understand where you sit in the scale of things until like, fuck, it's got to be like halfway through primary school, huh? When, when crushes and shit start coming out. I think it was around then that I worked out, I, well, that I worked out, I wasn't ugly, but I wasn't like, I'm not up there. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm floating around, I'm floating like upper middle. That's where I am. And a lot of that is just my height, you know? I'm upper middle class attractiveness. That's where I sit, you know? But you look at early me, I was not upper middle. Now I've worked out how to style myself and dress. Oh, you look like a school shooter. Shut up, cunt. That's my joke, all right? Fuck you. Or I'll see you in math, yeah? That's like, I was, I, for a lot of my life, I was lower middle for sure. Not like, you know, fucking destitute. You see a couple of destitute cunts, you know? I was in a high school, my year level, fucking what, 200... 300 people, there were maybe five destitutes, you know? Yeah, and you know what I, you know what I mean. Yeah? Like, fuck, that bitch is all personality, huh? That's all she's got. Poor woman. <laughs> I remember, I reckon I worked it out. Yeah, it would have been like halfway through primary school. When everyone started getting crushes and I like you and do you like me back? All that shit. And I, I remember I really liked this one girl and she all, and I always, I always had a really good friend and she all re, always liked him and never me. And in my head, I was a kid. I was like, but we're the same. You know, I'm a fucking nice guy. He's a nice guy. Why is it always, why are the girls that I like always like him better than me? This is fucking weird. I don't understand it. And then one day, uh, I think I was just hanging out with him. And I just looked at him and I was like, oh, oh, because he, because I don't look like him and he looks like that. And that's why, fuck, I guess I'm here. And I had that moment and I was like, oh, I know where I sit. And that's a great valuable thing to know where you sit. Ladies and gentlemen, know your fucking role. Couple of, couple of sixes, you know, you see, you, you ever see a six acting like a nine? Tone it down. Slow your roll. You're not a nine, you know? Fucking, that's some, that's some Harvey Weinstein shit. That is a two acting like a ten. I guarantee you if Brad Pitt acted like Harvey Weinstein, there'd be no headlines. It's because he's a two. No, he's a horrible rapist. Bad example. Terrible example. But also, I kind of, there's something in there, isn't it? Here's a better one. Leonardo DiCaprio. Have you ever seen anyone call him a creep? No. He just looks like he's having fun with his 18-year-old girlfriends. Dude's 40-something. All these fucking whores are hanging out with, in their head, the young Leo. Young Leo's dead. You're looking at dad Leo with his fucking gut rolling through 18-year-old models. Young Leo is dead. Sorry, Tumblr bitches. He is gone. And that's not him. Swear to God, if I see one more bitch posting a fucking Tumblr gif of young Leo, do you understand how impossible it is for every male on the planet to compete with a man that doesn't exist anymore? Talk about unrealistic body standards. That guy doesn't even look like him anymore. And he is him. Ah, oh, what? Who's your type? Ah, oh, guys that just don't exist. <laughs> that's the thing, right? I think that's the biggest difference, right? With, with this, you know, this unrealistic body standard shit. You know what I think? Men have it worse. We just don't give a fuck. Right? If we cared, it would be worse. It's only worse for women 
because bitches care. Bitches be caring, don't they? Right? Because have you ever seen the ideal woman? It's like a banging body. Have you ever seen the ideal man? It is a banging head. Banging head. An absolute banger of a head. Don't believe me? Hey, Leonardo DiCaprio. Banging head. Head. He's got a good head. You look at Leo, you look at his fucking shirtless photos. Is that a good body? No. But is that a good head? Yes. That's what women like. They're like a good head. Men like a good body. Now, if we're talking unrealistic beauty standards, which one of those two things can you improve? Can't fix your fucking head, can ya? You can hit the gym, go for a run, you can't do any jaw sit-ups. If you got leafy chin, you're fucked. And that's just how it is. That's just how it is, guys. Men have the beauty standards worse. We just don't give a fuck. I'm going to pause here. Episode 200 is coming up. Hey, what are we up now? 196? Fuck. Next month. What should we do for episode 200? I was going to do a live show, but that's not happening for a fucking year, it looks like. Support me on Patreon, please help. Dude, speaking of live events, we'll talk about 200 later. I got some ideas. Speaking of live events getting cancelled, you know, a couple of podcasts ago, I was talking about, oh man, all that, all that, I would have made, you know, most of my income. Fuck, now I'm making nothing, bro. Those were the fucking days, huh? Remember when I thought I was going to make nothing from my tours? Remember when I thought I was going to make zero dollars from all my shows? How good was that? guys, because I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, you know, before the good old days was when I would do a show and then I would make money. Now, the good old days are when I would do a show and I would make no money because it got cancelled. That, w- that would be great. If I did a show, it got cancelled and I made no money. That would be awesome. That is the best case scenario for me in these uncertain times. Stop sending me your fucking emails, Maya. You get that an email from like Meyer or Godfrey's like, hey, vacuum company, don't know how we've got your email, but here's what we're doing about Corona. Shut the fuck up. You sell vacuums. Suck and fuck off. That's all. Suck and fuck off. That's a great clip to take out of context, huh? Chuck on Twitter. Lewis Spears. His view on women. Suck and fuck off. (laughs) I'm talking about vacuums. I'm talking about vacuum cleaners, not women. I understand. Very easy to confuse the two. (laughs) All right, that's enough. What am I talking about? Oh, yeah, the man, the good old days when I I would do a show and make no money. I missed those days. Remember that fucking last week? That was good. God, I just... Oh, got got a bloody email today. From the old management. Huh? Lots of venues don't want to give you money back, huh? Lots of... Apparently there are a lot of costs that you put up that... A lot of businesses are just like, Fuck you, we're keeping it. Oh, but you didn't do what you said you're... Fuck you, we're keeping it. Great. Hotels. They don't give you your money back, even when they can't let you stay there. So that's, woohoo! Instead of making zero, your boy's deep in the negative. That's fucking great. Isn't that sweet? Guys, look, Patreon, if you can afford it, that'd be nice because I got a big bill. (laughs) Woohoo! Dude, this shit sucks, huh? Hope hope if you're listening, you're not doing it uh, tough. I, look, if you're listening, I hope you're making no money, right? Because you don't want to be making negative money, you know? I, dude, remember the, remember the good old days when I was on fucking jeans money, jacket money, working my way up? Dude, I'm on working my way up to zero money. Fuck. Not good. Um, but I hope you guys aren't, uh, if you listen, I hope you're not doing it too tough. I hope you're managing to work or you're getting on those fucking government payments. Dude, I got a few unemployed friends that are stoked. Centrelink doubling? That's sweet. That's so much money. Some cunts, uh, they got fired and now they're making like twice as much. 
In Australia, we're getting $1,500 a fortnight, $750 a week. If you're American, I think that's about $450, $500 a week. That's a lot of money. Although, Americans, you guys are getting more money than us, aren't you? Isn't your unemployment like $900 a week? Or did I imagine it? Imagine that. Unemployment payments America. Or am I thinking of something else? Some cunts like yelling at their fucking phone. It's this. Unemployment benefits. 300 a week normally. That's a lot of money. I don't understand how America works. Unemployment payments America COVID-19 amount. How much are you cunts getting? Unemployment. Guys, I give up. Fuck. Shit's so confusing. $2.3 trillion package. That's one less rocket, isn't it? (laughs) One less rocket for a wedding, huh? All right. Fine. If you guys want a little bit of health care, I guess we'll launch one less rocket at a wedding, you know? Isn't that, isn't that, I, I love the, um, I think the whole argument in America about healthcare is everyone is just looking at it the wrong way. Right wing people are going, oh, we can't have healthcare because then everyone will get taxed. We can't afford it. And then the left wing are like, oh, we need healthcare. We need to raise taxes. Why don't the two of you cunts go, hey, why don't we spend less money on shelling civilians in the Middle East? Maybe we can take a few dollars out of the rocket budget, huh? Maybe we don't need to fund militias, hey? Maybe we, we can have a military, but maybe we don't need to give a nuke to fucking Joe because he says... He's not really, well, he's not on our side, but he's, he doesn't like the guys we don't like. So we're going to give him a nuke. We're going to get, we're going to send some dude out in a fucking Ford driving down there. What was it? Holden's did they get? What was that fucking, was it ISIS? Where one day ISIS just had like a hundred Fords or was it Holden? I, I don't know. Car- this is this guys this isn't my lack of knowledge of politics this is my lack of knowledge of cars because I'm 26 years old and I've got no fucking license Isis Fords Was it Ford Mason is Ford the Australian one or is Holden the Australian Isis Holden Wait Holden Ford Holden Ford, fictional character, TV show, Mind Hunter. Guys, something's wrong with my Google foo. Isis Ford Truck Ranger? Was it a Ford Ranger? Ford Ranger. I'm just getting ads for Ford Ranger. You know what this makes me think? That this must be what it is. Because if it doesn't fucking show up on Google... Oh, here we go. Plumber sues dealership for $1 million after truck ends up with terrorists. No way. What the fuck? So I'm looking at footage of ISIS driving. What is that? A Ford Ranger with a fucking machine gun In the tray, like a giant, looks like an anti-tank gun in a fucking tray of a Ford. And then on the side of it, it says Mark's Plumbing. Oh, no. And his fucking phone number. It looks like fucking Mark has been supplying Fords to ISIS with his plumber's wage. Dude, how the fuck did they get that? This is sweet. Mark Olberholzer. All Mark wanted to do was upgrade his ride. What he got instead was a world of trouble from half a world away. Dude, that, that's got to be America's number one problem, huh? Is, hey, leave other people alone. That's all. Leave other cunts alone. 
and you can pay for everything. They're out there fucking shipping Holdens to ISIS and Mark's plumbing gets fucked. You know, ISIS straps an anti-tank gun to his fucking new, new, new Ford, shoots down a civilian airliner. All of a sudden, Mark gets beaten up in the street. And now because the American government's spending money on rockets instead of healthcare, he can't fix his teeth. And it's all because Ford sold their truck to ISIS. How the fuck do they get that? Plumbing company, a plumbing in Texas, a plumbing company owner is suing a Ford dealership for more than one million in financial losses and damages to his company's reputation after a pickup truck he once owned ended up with Islamic militants fighting in serious civil war. How the fuck did that happen? A photo of the truck with his Mark 1 plumbing decal still attached went viral, leading to thousands of harassing phone calls. Jesus Christ. What kind of a fucking fool do you have to be to see a truck in Syria and call the number and go, hello, is this Muhammad? Oh, it's Mark? Hey, Mark. How dare you sell your truck to ISIS? Yeah, like Mark fucking put his truck up on carsales.com. And I said, hello, 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 is this Mark's plumbing? Hello, yes? Oh, praise be to Allah, Mark, hello, yes, yes, I'm looking for a, a pickup truck. Yes, yes, we, ha- we could pay cash. No, we can't meet up, no, it... No, I don't need a test drive. No, I, I don't need to meet up. I'm act- I am actually in Syria. I'm in Syria. One second. I'm in Syria. Yes. Yes, I still, I want to, I'm, I am uh, the, uh, I'm, in, I'm in charge of, uh, my name's Abdallah. I'm in charge of, uh, I am the mechanic, the mechanic for ISIS. Yes, for ISIS. Uh, the Islamic State, yes. Yes, I want to buy your car. How will you get it to Syria? Um, shipping container. Yes, yes, I know it. Very difficult, but I, I, I will pay cash, yes. Just before I do, how, how much weight can the tray, <laughs> how much weight can the tray handle? Do you think I could fit an anti-personnel machine gun in there? And my boys? You, yes? Okay, I'll see you in, in... I'll see you in 60 days. How the fuck did that truck get there? That was a good bit, wasn't it? Um, these phone calls were... So we got thousands of phone calls. I've got to pause one second. All right, we're back. These phone calls were in large part harassing and contained countless threats of violence, property harm, injury, and death. Oberholzer said this wouldn't have happened if the dealership had just removed the decals before the truck was resold. Hey, that's not the biggest issue. How about instead of why didn't you take my advertisements off my truck before you sold it? That's the wrong question to ask. How about... Hey, why the fuck did you sell a truck to ISIS? That's the question. What is this Mark guy doing? Like, yeah, you could give it to ISIS, but get my name off it. Fuck. How the fuck did they sell a truck to ISIS? The issue of Western vehicles flowing into the Middle East has attracted global attention. For instance, the U.S. Treasury Department has asked Toyota how so many of its vehicles have wound up in militant hands. Jeez, that's not good advertising, isn't it? You know, Mark must be feeling bad, but every single one of their cars is a big fucking Toyota on the back, doesn't it? That's not, that can't be good. However many phone calls Mark's getting, you think about Toyota. They must be feeling very good about this. Toyota. Terrorist choice. Toyota pickups seem to be the preferred vehicle of militants in the Middle East. (laughs) Toyota is the truck that jihadists use when they want to go to war. Isn't that fucking crazy? 
Just how the truck ended up in the hands of militants is a bit of a mystery. In 2013, Mark took the truck to Auto Nation in Houston for a trade-in. He got a 2012 truck and said goodbye to his old one. He started to peel off the company's decals from the truck's doors, but a salesman stopped him, according to the lawsuit. The man told Mark that peeling off the decal would damage the paint on the truck. (laughs) No, no, leave it there, leave it there. Why? You'll see. You'll see, Mark. The truck was auctioned off in November 2013, the next month, and it was shipped from Houston to Turkey, according to the lawsuit. And then a year later, it popped up in a tweet by a journalist showing a militant's firing a heavy weapon from the bed of the truck with Mark's name on the front door. That is fucking crazy. (laughs) Most of the calls were harassing and threatened violence and included the yelling of expletives at whoever answered the phone. The singing in Arabic for the duration of the phone call. (laughs) That's like some fucking 14 year old kid calling Mark and Mark answers and he goes, that's great, isn't it? Mark had to shut down his business and leave town according to the lawsuit resulting in financial losses. He'd also had visits from Homeland Security and the FBI. Jesus Christ, the FBI are fucking dumb, huh? Do you really think that some dude was like, man, you know what? You know what ISIS need? My fucking truck. Are the FBI that dumb to assume that Mark is that dumb? That he would just drive his truck from Houston, Texas to Syria, give it to the first guy in a balaclava he saw and was like, nah, mate, leave the decals on. I want the phone calls. Fuck. He still has to deal with phone calls which continue to come in a year after the photo first appeared. He now carries a gun for protection, according to the lawsuit. Yeah, he's from Texas. He was always carrying a gun. He probably had one in his back pocket. He never knew it was there. He's like, oh, what the fuck's that? Oh, handgun. That's right, I'm Texan. (laughs) That's crazy, huh? How do they get all those fucking Toyotas? How do we get here? Oh, 40 minutes? Right. Miscellaneous bit at the end, ladies and gentlemen. Worst part of the podcast is the part where I answer questions sent in by the listeners. If you'd like to send an email to Spearhead Sundays, the best way to do that is send an email to podcast at lewspears.com, summarize it in the subject line, and uh, try and keep it nice and nice and sharp for me so it's not fucking six pages. Here's, here's a perfect email, right? This is how much scrolling I've got to do. One, and it's done. If I have to do one, two, you're not getting on the podcast. Sorry. One scroll, an entire phone scroll, is like, that's like six paragraphs. That's big. How many is this? One, two, three, four, five, six. Max. All right. First email from Alex. My new girlfriend is boring. Oh, dude. I feel like a lot of people go through this. Girlfriends and boyfriends, both sides. Hey, Lewis, my mates and I saw your No Slide Season show in Melbourne last year and absolutely loved it. Awesome show. Thank you very much. Oh, God, I miss performing. Anyway, just want to get your take on my current relationship situation. I'm 19. I've just finished high school last year and recently got out of a two and a half year relationship at the start of the year. All right, serial data on our hands. This man's never been single. He doesn't know what it's like. I've since started talking to another girl. We've slept together a few times and went on a few dates before isolation. We've also been texting ever since it started, but I've come to the realization that she is super boring. Dude, so many people must be coming to that, huh? All these people that are not or, or, or in relationships or in early relationships, but not living together. A lot of people must be realizing, oh man, I don't like this guy. He just had good dick. This guy's boring as fuck. It's like talking to a fucking nail. The only good thing about this dude was his head and his dick. Everything else sucks, you know? I bet there's a bunch of people realizing that shit. Oh, when we're not in the same room together, they're insufferable. Um, I've come to the realization she is super boring. I'm not trying to sound like a cunt, but she has zero interests at home. And the only thing we have in common so far is getting drunk and clubbing. 
I still think this girl is super cute and we have a similar sense of humor, but I've started to think maybe I'm not quite over my ex and I don't know if I should either try to get back with her, stay with my new girl, or just wait until isolation is over and look around a bit before I rush into another relationship. Maybe I'm just overthinking things in quarantine, but alas, just curious to hear your take on my situation. Cheers, Alex. Alex, oh, poor buddy. You're just a little bit lonely, mate. You haven't been single ever. When you're sing when you were single, right? What what do you say? You were 19. Are you 19 now? I'm 19. Got out of a two and a half year relationship. You've never been single. You have just been a child and then you got a girlfriend. And that's all you know. Be single, bro. That's the answer. You broke up with your girl, leave it alone. All right? Clearly you don't like your other girlfriend from your email anyway. You just don't like this girl, so you're like, fuck, I don't like this girl, so I must like that girl. Be single. You're not going to do any dating. Just be a single dude, right? You're probably right. She's probably boring as fuck. She hasn't been an adult for very long. A lot of people are just like that, man, especially hot people. A lot of hot people have no interests. They don't need them. They don't need a skill. What do you need a skill for when you're an 11 out of 10? Skills and interests equal endorphins. What do I need endorphins for when I can get that scrolling through Tinder? Every cunt on there is calling me hot. You know what I mean? Some people are just boring. That's fine. And if you are one of those people, hey, read a book, learn something, try new shit, figure out what you like. If the only thing you're good at is talking to other cunts, you're boring. Um, I would, it sounds like, dude, it's, it just sounds like, yeah, you just don't really like this girl. And it also doesn't really sound like she's your girlfriend. You guys have been dating for a little bit. You've had sex a few times and now you're sick of her. So I would just be single, bro. Live it up. Read a book. Get an interest. Get a skill. That's what I reckon. What else do we have here? Um... Where are we? Scrolling through here. Podcast at loosebeers.com. Uh, fuck. All right. I fell in love with a girl, but I'm too much of a pussy to tell her. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. Um, hey, Lewis. Call me pussy. Ugh. This is going to be a bad email. Uh, basically, I've been talking to this girl called Sarah for months, and I think I genuinely love her. She gives me feelings that I've only ever heard of had from drugs. Yes, when I talk to Sarah, I feel like I'm on pingers. I regret opening this. I'm not going to lie. Like every other cunt who emails the show talking about chicks, it's not that I want to ruin our friendship. It's just that I'm a massive pussy. Do you think I should tell her? Yes. Yes. Why did you email me? Why would you do that? Why would you do that to the show? Oh, I like a girl. Should I tell her? If I get one more of those fucking emails... I quit. I like a girl. Should I tell her? Hey. No. Don't. Don't ever fucking. Don't tell her. You know why? You're going to ruin her day. Because any cunt. Who sends a grown man stranger a fucking email asking, should I tell someone that I like them? You're 12. Even if you're 18, you're 12. Do you understand me? You're 12 years old. Never ask me that question again. Be 
Because the answer is, you are 12. Live your life like a child. What else do we have here? Uh, <laughs> how long have we got here? About 50 minutes. All right. Um, where are we? My new girlfriend's boring. We don't really have that many fucking emails. Um. Oh, okay. There's a bit of a story here. I can't remember if I read this one out. I've definitely opened it. I don't think I've read it out. If I have, I apologize. I got high with my mum in quarantine. Hey, cunt, I love your work, and I would love you to do a show in Canada. Hey, man, give me fucking three years. When do you think international shit's going to open up? Because I was thinking that um, Australia's going to get this shit over with pretty quick. New Zealand's done with it. But America is... It looks like America's going to have it for, like, years. You know, like, unless they get a vaccine, it looks like America's going to be dealing with this shit for years. And you can't trust China. And India will just be fucked. Like, it hasn't even really hit India yet, you know? Like, you think about all of those countries that they're not, they're not third world, but, you know, they're not, they, they've got dense populations and they have a lot of poor people, like India. They're going to be fucked by this shit. So I don't know when international stuff's going to come back, like travel. You know, I was thinking that shows in Australia, probably a year minimum, I would think. I think that everything will return pretty much to normal in the next six months with social distancing. Any business that can social distance, but live events is going to be last. You know what I'm saying? That's going to be the last thing to come back because you can't do that safely, you know? So that shit's going to be coming back last. But then after that, international travel. Because it's like, if we fix it and then we let all these other countries in that they're fucked from it, we're fucked again, unless there's a vaccine. So I wonder when that's going to happen. Anyway, for about a year or more, I've been joking with my mum and asking her to buy me weed. Oh, is it? Oh, it's legal there. Is it? So, I mean, that's either that's legal or you live in Canada's Frankston. So day 16 of the quarantine, my mum rocks up with almost an ounce of weed. She then says that if I want to smoke it, then I have to roll it. This being my first time smoking, dude, Canada is on another fucking level, huh? Your mum bought you weed and taught you how to roll a joint? That's legalization, isn't it? Isn't that just some fucking white people shit? This being my first time smoking, I had no clue how to roll a joint. After a YouTube video by Seth Rogen, dude, weed, I managed to get something uh, that would kind of light. Being high with your mum does not sound fun, but it wasn't bad. After 10 minutes, uh, about 10 minutes after I smoked, my mum forced me to clean the entire house and the garage. <laughs> I know this wasn't exciting, but it's my first time writing in if you read this to the cunts on the podcast. Thanks. That's hilarious. He was, your your mum, you must suck at housework, dude. If you have, If your mum has to like drug you to do the garage. Maybe you need to like clean up around the house a little bit more, dude. If that's the only way. So she was like, all right, we can smoke weed together. And by that, I mean, I'm going to watch you smoke weed and then tell you to clean the house because you do fucking nothing around here. Step up your game, bro. I think that's your issue. That's weird. Although, I don't know. I grew up, my parents always smoking weed. It's pretty normal in my house. Isn't that funny? My parents smoke weed and drink and were real open about it and didn't really tell me not to. And I'm sober. Isn't that funny? Whereas they told me to try hard in school and behave and look at me. Failed high school and I'm still misbehaving. You've got to be real careful what you tell your kids not to do. You've got to pick. That's what I think because at some point they're just going to follow the rules, follow the rules. Then you hit teenager and teenagers go, I'm going to break this one, that one and these. So you got to be careful with what rules you put in because teenagers are going to go this, this, and them. I'm breaking all of them. Fuck you, mum and dad. And I never had the no drug, no drinking rule, so never wanted to. Because that's not fun, is it? 
if mum tells you to do it or not do it, but if mum doesn't tell you, if mum doesn't tell you not to do it, if you do it, it's, well, it's whatever. All right, guys, I'm going to end it there. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, if you want to uh, support what I'm doing, if you'd like to help me get back to zero, that'd be really nice. Uh, support me on Patreon. You get early access to the podcast, early access to all the videos. I've been pumping them out recently. Uh, I'm real real happy with what we've been putting out. Keelan's still, still on the books, thank the Lord. Uh, and we're doing some great shit. Three videos this week. Pretty fucking good, huh? Pretty fucking, for the last three weeks, I've done like six videos, I think. Plus all the podcasts. So Patreon's how we're pulling that off. Uh, so thank you very much to everyone who supports me on there. And uh, shout out to all the people in the, di- in the Discord as well. You get a Discord uh, if you join me on Patreon. And uh, we're building up this fucking community, man. It's really cool. And I uh, really, really do appreciate uh, people stepping up and helping me out during all of this. Because uh, <laughs> boy, oh boy, I would love to be making zero dollars. But uh, that's not possible for old Louie because not everyone gives you your money back, all right? So if you want to support me, help me through this, that's how you can do it. If you're doing it tough, I understand. But hey, if you're getting free money from the government, you got a little extra coming in on the side, we all do it. You know, send a bit my way, huh? Stimulate my economy. All right, I'll talk to you next Sunday. Thanks for listening. Have a shit one.